Cool Science Physics, Topic 4, Waves and the Earth. We're looking at infrasound, ultrasound, earthquakes, seismic waves and detecting earthquakes. Infrasound. So we've talked uh, in Topic 2 about the electromagnetic spectrum, which has a range of frequencies. There's only a small part of it that we can actually detect. That's the visible light part. Lower frequencies than that are infrared and higher frequencies are ultraviolet. It's very similar with sound waves. There's um, a range of frequencies that we can hear between 20 and 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. Anything lower than that is known as infrasound. Anything higher than that is known as ultrasound. So infrasound is any sound with a frequency lower than 20 hertz. We can't hear it, but it can be used for lots of things. Some animals communicate using infrasound. These are larger animals like elephants, and it's a advantageous to them because infrasound can travel much further than normal sound. They can communicate over hundreds of kilometres. It can also be useful for humans because we can use devices that do detect infrasound to work out where animals are in the wild. We can also detect volcanoes that are erupting in really remote places because um, they give out infrasound when they erupt. Meteors, rocks travelling through the sky give out infrasound and that enables us to track them and collect data about where they're moving. Ultrasound, then, is any sound too high for us to hear. It has a frequency above 20,000 hertz. Again, some animals communicate using ultrasound, bats and dolphins. Bats even use ultrasound to find their food. They emit an ultrasound wave, it reflects off their food, they detect the echo and they can work out where their food is. Fetal or baby scans use ultrasound. An ultrasound tra um, travels into the... Um, the pregnant lady's tummy reflects off different tissues from the baby's surface and we can use those reflections to build up a picture. Ultrasound is used in sonar machines on boats. Um, these are used to calculate the depth of the sea. Ultrasound is emitted and it reflects back up again. The machine records how long it takes to travel there and back and then can work out the distance travelled by doing the speed multiplied by the time. So that's the total distance there and back. The depth of the sea is of course just half of that distance travelled. Earthquakes. So the Earth uh, is made up of a liquid hot core, a molten rock, a very, very thick, almost solid rock mantle, and then an outer crust of solid rock. The core is very hot, which causes the mantle nearest to it to move away from it, and as it cools down, it moves back down. So we get these movements in the mantle called convection currents. Now the crust that sits on top of the mantle is split into large pieces called tectonic plates and as the mantle moves it causes the plates that sit on top to move as well. Now it's not so straightforward as giant pieces of rock just moving. When we look at two plates trying to slide past each other there's going to be a lot of friction there so force builds up and builds up and builds up and will suddenly move and jolt and that sudden jolt of movement is called an earthquake. This happens randomly and cannot be predicted. Now, when this earthquake happens, that movement, that energy has to go somewhere and it spreads outwards in all directions. And as we know, energy travels as waves. The waves from an earthquake are known as seismic waves and there are two types, P waves and S waves. The P waves travel faster, they're longitudinal. The S waves travel slower and they're transverse. Now you'll notice that when they get to the core, P waves and S waves behave differently. P waves can travel through liquid, so they can travel through the core, whereas S waves can't. So the S waves get reflected off, and as the P waves pass through, they actually change direction, they're refracted. You'll also notice that both waves follow curved paths, and this is because there are lots of different densities in the mantle, so we've got constant refraction of those waves. How do we detect earthquakes? Well, we use a machine called a seismometer that picks up on those waves in the Earth's surface and it produces a print called a seismograph. So when the waves um, happen, we get the P waves happening first, which are smaller vibrations, and then the much larger S wave vibrations. And scientists are interested in the time between when the P waves arrive and when the S waves arrive, and they use that time to work out a distance or how far away the earthquake is. So if I'm at station A and I know the earthquake is 8 kilometres from me, it could be 8 kilometres in any direction. I then need to talk to my friends at stations B and C and they will tell me how far away the earthquake was from their stations. The point, if I plot this on some kind of diagram where they all intersect, is the location of where the earthquake happened.